And I'd uh, like to call to order the regular meeting of the Haverford Township Planning Commission for July 25th, 2019. <clears throat> and our uh, first applicant on our agenda is R.S. Homes, LLC, 301 and 305 Ellis Road. Oh, oh yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> we'll take the roll first. I'm sorry. Mr. Capuzzi? Here. Mr. Reardon? Here. Mr. Gelman? Here. Mr. Friodabundo? Here. Mr. Poyne? Here. Here. Mr. Russo? Okay, and I'd like everyone to join us with the Pledge of Allegiance. States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Peaceful. liberty, and justice, justice for all. Okay, thank you. So, the first item on our agenda this evening is the subdivision of 301 and 305 Ellis Road for RS Homes LLC. And I believe our applicant is present. James Buckler on behalf of the applicant RS Homes. Um, present with me today are Jim Musselman from Yawn Engineering, um, who's the project engineer, and Chris Sexton, who's one of the principals of RS Homes. Um, uh, by way of brief overview, this is a subdivision of a approximately two acre parcel of land to be subdivided into, uh, it contains an existing home. The plan is to, to subdivide the property into two one acre, approximately one acre parcels to um, demolish the existing home and to build two new homes on the property. Um, the, the land about, or the, the, the plans are compliant with the zoning ordinance uh, with the exception, well, and it's not really non-compliance. There's a special exception which is required um, in order to, because a portion of the driveway crosses a, uh, a steep slope. We have filed an application for a special exception with the zoning hearing board. We have a hearing scheduled in, in August. I don't expect that's going to be an issue. We're, we're disturbing less than the allowed amount of steep slope. There's um, this area right in here, across here is steep, this steep slope. And the amount of, and, and it's just this little corner right here of the steep slope that's being disturbed. It's about 700 square feet of steep slope. This is a down slope, so we're not cutting. There'd be a little bit of fill, and I, I expect, I don't know it for sure. Excuse me, you'll have to speak at the mic. We oh, I'm can't. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, so there's, there's some cut involved, um, I, I mean, there's no cut involved, there's some fill because you have a slope down from the road. I anticipate that that's probably a man-made steep slope that was probably made to cut so you had a flat front yard for the existing house. Um, it's been there a long time so it's hard to establish that, but I think I would be pretty sure given the surrounding um, topography, that's the only steep slope in the area and my guess is that right there by the road and across here, where we're across the front of the road up going up to Ellis. It was created so that the house that's there has a reasonably flat, flat um, front yard. Um, the, um, there's there's an, uh, one issue, I suppose, that I, that I, want, I want to highlight for the um, Planning Commission, other than in, in addition to answer any questions you have, but there's a, an issue from my perspective that relates to the um, sewer. Um, Right now, I'm sure you're aware, there's a problem with connecting public sewers, um, getting approval to add capacity to this public sewers in, in um, Haverford Township. Um, we, right now, the existing house has a public sewer. It's connected to public sewer. And we would propose, in the long run, to have both of the homes that are being built connected to the public sewer. But that would require an additional, one additional capacity. Um, your ordinance makes specific provision for um, uh, on-site systems on lots of more than an acre, which we are. And so we are proposing to um, provide for uh, the, all of the necessary um, uh, connections, uh, laterals, et cetera, and a commitment to connect to the public sewer if and when we can do that. But, that in, but in the interim, if in fact we're ready to, to, to um, build a house and, and, and uh, occupy it, we are asking to have permission to um, have an on-site system on one of these lots, of course conditioned on satisfying all of the requirements of the Department of Environmental Protection as to um, uh, their um, uh, 
planning module, et cetera. Um, I've discussed this with Mr. Faulkner. He knows um, our position. We have had conversations with um, the, the appropriate parties at DEP, and have, they have no objection to that proposal so long as we comply with their requirements. Um, as far as the, the other engineering comments, I think that there are um, some, some that bear discussion. For the most part, um, the June 26 review letter from, from Mr. Faulkner, our, our responses are that we will comply with those comments. Um, I, I would point out to you that um, comment number two, which talks about the setbacks, um, uh, w will require that we um, make some modifications to the plan um, as it relates to the placement of the house. Um, you know, Ellis Road is, it doesn't, it seems like that's all one road. I, we call, talk about the Ellis Road frontage. It's Ellis Road in front and then it turns around. So both sides of our, of a property front on Ellis Road, but on the golf course side of Ellis Road, the, the, the part of our, of the property that's across from the golf course, the homes on that side, on that section of Ellis Road, um, are further from the, 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 the median setback is uh, in the neighborhood of 90 feet on that side. Uh, and we are showing a 50 foot setback um, because that's what the, um, the, the uh, ordinance shows. So we understand that we need to um, modify the um, placement of the house and perhaps re, rearrange the dimensions and uh, the, that, 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 that house um, was, a, um, was one that the, the owners have, or the developers have built before and they had proposed to build it, but it's, it's not, there's nothing magic about it. It's just a concept and we can arrange to do that and we will arrange to do that. We will commit to um, modifying the plan going to comply down, with that going requirement. Down the other side of, uh, sorry. Going down the other side of Ellis, the uh, side runs uh, for lot where they're, where they're where going to face now. now right? uh, how far back? Do you the, the, they're actually much closer. The average setback is 30 to 40 feet on that side. So we're, we're so since you're facing on that road, right? That may have some effect also on what. Jeff, am I wrong about that? Should that have some effect? We're talking well, about if they're if you're if you're going to now orient the houses towards the other street towards the other Ellis and they're already not as far back, shouldn't that, should 50 foot setbacks be reasonable or are you thinking you wanna have them closer to the street? Well, I think Mr. Buckler's talking about the golf course side of Ellis is what he's talking about. Right. I don't, I don't think the, and correct me if I'm wrong, Jim, but I don't think the other side of Ellis is an issue. Correct. Right, and I, why would, you? so you want this other house to be moved further back to in lot number one? Well, I believe the zoning ordinance, and correct me if I'm wrong, Kelly's specifies 200 feet from in either direction. It's 300 feet, I or think. 300 feet. Whatever, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. And I think, and we have an unusual property because if we had a, a true intersection, it would be pretty straightforward, I think. Because we have a curve, I guess it's a matter of interpretation. Do you go 300 feet in both each direction from the property and average them out, or do you treat this side and this side as different streets? Um, I think that my sense is a reasonable interpretation of the intent of the ordinance is that we would do that latter because the point, the intent is to, is to keep the, the, the setting of the houses somewhat consistent along a, a, a line. And so that's what, what, how I propose to do it. I think that's the most sensible interpretation of the ordinance. Um, so I, so our, the, the, the frontage of the homes that we have could actually, we're showing them 90 feet back, they might might move forward. As a matter of fact, more likely than not, the corner house will probably have to move forward in order to be able to um, accommodate the change in the other side setback. Um, and we're prepared to do that and, and we have no problem with a condition of approval that requires that. So on the golf course side, you're going to push that to 90 feet? Approximately. I mean, Approximately. We have, yeah, we'll have to do the calculation, yes. So, and, and, and it, it, the, the houses could be, that you know, we can accomplish most of that simply by taking that little addition off the side, which is, a, which is an optional addition, which was just shown there, and moving the house over to the existing, you know, all the way over to the side yard 
setback. We'd have right. to recalculate, re rearrange the driveway setting, but really by doing that and moving it to the closer to the front yard setback, we uh, pick up almost all that we need to do that, and, and we understand that we'll have to do that. Um, the other questions, I guess it's helpful, I think it's helpful to talk about the things that are questions in, in, um, that were raised by, by Chuck in his review letter. The other uh, question or the, the issue that I have is um, uh, there, there's mention of, of sidewalk, and, and I would, um, I would um, suggest that there's no purpose to putting sidewalk in, in this location. Um, I'm sure you've heard this before, but it's, it's a sidewalk to nowhere, and it's a sidewalk in a place where you don't want to encourage pedestrian traffic when you get to the end of the sidewalk. Um, and it's in an area where there's no, I, I've, I've seen it, I've heard the argument, well, there's going to be future development and eventually there'll be more sidewalk. You can look at these, at these lots. There is no, other than this corner lot, there might be one other lot within a half mile that is not um, too small to subdivide. So there's no potential that there's going to be another subdivision coming along anywhere along that section that's going to lead to a reason to have more sidewalks or anything else. So I would suggest that sidewalks along Ellis in that location are not only useless, but they're actually a bad idea because you really don't want people walking along there and, and getting to the corner at Ellis and deciding to walk down Ellis. That's just not a place you want people to be walking. Um, there is um, uh, there's a, a mention of street lighting, and I can only say that it looks to me as though um, there's already three street lights on the road that front our property, so I can't imagine that there'd be any um, additional street lighting. And the, uh, the, 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 the street lighting section in the ordinance talks about street lighting as being something that's at the discretion of the um, Board of Commissioners if they think it's appropriate in a residential development. I think that language in the ordinance is generally in the subdivision ordinance is intended to address situations where there have been additional streets built and so you need to think about lighting for them and we're not making any additional streets and as I say there's already three street lights that front on our property um, two on one on the golf course side one at the corner and one around on the front of our property all of which are you know which are more than adequate street light consistent with the street lighting throughout that area so there'd be no real purpose in additional street lighting um, I think that um, we would obviously like to not include curbing and street widening, but I understand that there may be some um, more um, reason for that, and I suppose I would want to clarify that the street, as I understand it, is four feet under. It's, in, it's the 27 foot that's called for in the ordinance, um, and it's currently is 23 feet, as I understand it, so we would be talking about on our side of the street, widening it two feet along that portion of Ellis. I think that the other section of Ellis is, as I understand, that's a state highway, and so that's, and that's already to spec. So we're only talking about the portion across the frontage of Ellis. Um, other than those comments, um, the, all the other engineering comments are things that we're prepared to address and to um, provide the information that's, that's required or been requested by Mr. Faulkner. And with that, I would, um, and, and, and Jim Musselman's here from Yon Engineering, as I say, and he's prepared to answer any engineering questions that you have, and we'll try to address any other questions that you might have. To the sidewalks, are you in receipt of the letter dated July 18th from the Delaware County? I, I, received, I understand. I received their comment, I and mean, I received their, and I, I, I that's fine. I, I don't think that um, they have the perspective um, uh, the same perspective. I, I appreciate that it's in the ordinance and it's easy to say, well, let's decide. I'm simply saying there's really no purpose to it. Um, and I, I don't think the fact that the Planning Commission, Delaware County Planning Commission, um, made mention of it changes anything that I said about, the, about what, whether it serves any purpose or whether it's a good thing or a bad thing. I think that as a board, we've been trying to encourage sidewalks and we've heard Exactly the argument. Sure, the I'm sure you've heard nowhere, it from plenty but we, of people. But our counter argument to that is if everybody keeps saying it's a sidewalk to nowhere, then we'll never get sidewalks. And 
we're trying to encourage. Well, I, I, I get that, and that's and I understand that, except that what I'm saying to you is we're talking about the last place in this in this little corner of Haverford Township. That This is the last piece of ground that's going to be subdivided um, at any time, that, unless you change your zoning ordinance and make the density a lot higher. Um, and, and unless there's changes in your density, there's no place else in here that anybody's going to be coming in to subdivide, and there's no, there's no opportunity for any additional sidewalk to ever be built. And so I would... I would suggest that this is a little different situation because of that. John. I, uh, I'm good for it. Chris. Hey, Chuck, on the, uh, the comment number three about the uh, side yards not meeting the aggregate yard requirement, Is it 50 feet or, or, or lot two? Yeah. Or, or show, below the way he's got laid out, he's got 20 foot on either side. Right. So you, you'll fix that? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. We'll just have to reconfigure the house. Like I said, the house that was put on there was a, was a um, concept, and we'll reconfigure the house. I echo the comment on the sidewalks. We're trying to make sure that they do get built. That's it for me. I have no comments. Thank you. Um, you're, you're, first of all, you're presenting this as a final plan, correct? Yes. Okay. I see nowhere on here any, any requests for waivers or anything I, like well, that. Actually, I, I apologize. That was my oversight. I, 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 I meant to, um, in my presentation, indicate to you that we would be requesting waivers and that I would be submitting a letter to the township. I wanted to wait until after this evening's meeting. Um, to get the flavor of the uh, planning commission before I did that, but we would be requesting waivers as it relates to um, the, si the, the sidewalk. Um, I don't know that a waiver is necessary as it relates to the um, street lighting because that's not really, that's really at the discretion. I don't think there's anything that would require a waiver there, but as it relates to the, to the sidewalk um, curb, um, minimum cart width, if, if we would request a waiver if the, if the, um, uh, if the uh, planning commission recommended that we be permitted to proceed that way, uh, and that was an oversight on my part in the uh, in the uh, presentation, so we would amend the plan. It's got to be amended anyhow for a number of reasons. Okay, uh, in regards to your uh, your plan of putting in an on lot system for one of the lots, um, the township code requires you know houses within 200 feet of a sanitary sewer to be connected. Um, let me, let me, if I can, and I, I understand what you're saying, and let me just um, qualify that. Let me just pull up the, because I printed out the sections of the code. They, they, they say more than that. Um, say, they say that um, whenever practicable, Sanitary sewer shall be installed and connected to the township system. Okay. I apologize. No, here we are. What, what section or what paragraph are you reading from? I'm looking at section uh, 160B, 5B9. Okay, that's the subdivision land development board? Yeah, yeah. Okay. The township has a chapter 149 covered sewage and drainage facility. Correct, correct. And, and, and I think I, I, whenever, and I think it starts with the proposition that whenever public sewer is available, and right now public sewer is not available, and your and your and your um, your or your your subdivision ordinance has specific provisions whenever it says whenever it's impractical to to connect to the township sewers, on-site sewage may be permitted upon application and approval of the sewage enforcement officer in the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Resources. Um, and that's in that's um, section 8H of that of that ordinance. And we have that situation. Um, there's actually a specific provision in here for um, uh, capped sewers. I'm not suggesting that, but there's when you start from the proposition that sewer is available, and if public sewer were available to us, we would have no question, no problem, no issue. We would commit. We would, and we are committing to connect to the public sewer. 
the minute it's available. But right now, as I understand it, it's not available. And we have no control over it being available. And your ordinance has specific provisions that allow for public sewer on lots of over an acre when public sewer is not available, which is the situation that we have right now. Well, I, I don't know that I agree with your interpretation. Um, there, we've processed many subdivisions within the Darby Creek watershed where uh, the applicant has had to go through the uh, planning module approval process to get sewage approval for an additional lot or two. And eventually they get it. I wouldn't say that it's not sewer isn't available. It may take uh, a few months to get approval, but I, I would say it is available. There is no moratorium that I'm aware of that says that no development can occur within the Darwin Creek watershed. It's that you have to go through that process of checking with all the townships down the line to make mm -hmm. sure that they can grant one additional EDO. Right. And, and in addition, in, in my 16 years on this board, no one's ever come in for on, an on-lot sewage application. But regardless, if you're proposing that, then you have to do testing. And that has to show on a subdivision plan. We can't just approve a plan not knowing where this system's going, if, if the ground even perks or right. anything like that. I right. think putting that into the mix, you have a whole different planning. I think you're right. I think. I mean, I'm, I understand, and I'm not. I'm not. I understand that there are things that have to be done on this plan um, before we would be looking for you to um, approve it or recommend it for approval. Um, and I think at, at this point we 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 filed the application. We wanted to come in front of the planning commission, discuss the issues that we have to discuss, and to find out um, what uh, what guidance you would give us as to, as, you, as to your position on some of these things. Uh, I, my, my position is I don't, I don't agree with your interpretation that there's no public sewer available. I okay. believe it's available. Um, I had some other, I guess, engineering related questions. Um, if your engineer is here, he yes. can answer those for me. Sure. Um, and, and maybe I the, this is not a question you can answer, but is it your intent to develop both lots at the same time? Not necessarily. Not necessarily? No. Okay, so if someone comes in and say, I want, to, I want the house on lot two, then you would build that first? I guess. I'm not sure. I mean, I, I, uh, I don't, know. It, the I don't I, know the answer to that, The reason I ask these questions is because in order to construct, say, the driveway on lot one, you have to grade onto lot two. Right. So if lot two is built, and develop, unless you've created some type of temporary construction easement on lot two, to, you can't build the driveway if it's shown. Right. You're, okay. So, I mean, I think that's an important point in my regard. Um, and, and I think your plan has to reflect how these lots might be developed if indeed they aren't built at the same time. Or, or at the very least, maybe you have to put in the driveway for lot one at the same time you build lot two, if lot two goes first. But I think you have to account for all those possibilities. Okay. I mean, that's something that we can handle with a note on the plan. That's not a, that's not a, a, a an issue. I, I think it has more than a note. If you if you transfer pro ownership of the property, it, a note isn't going to guarantee you the right to encroach on that property after the fact. Well, um, again, in my experience, if you're proposing an on-lot system, uh, a lot of townships require a replacement area. Right. Okay? Right. And given the fact that you have steep slopes and you have on-lot stormwater management facilities, there's isolation distance that have to be maintained between any on-site right. system. So, again, if, if you're proposing that, you have to show it on right. an engineered drawing. I, I, I okay. understand that. Okay. Um, and all, the other thing is, do you know if any of the lots adjacent to you are on uh, well, have private wells? I don't know the answer to that. Okay. But I'm, I'm assuming they are. On, on both sides. No, it doesn't I, I mean. Understand. Yeah, yeah, I understand that maybe they are. It's aren't something connected. you have to research because yep. there's yep. a hundred foot isolation. It would, would affect the location of the. Okay. We're go we, we would be on public water. You would. I understand yes. that. Yes. yes. And again, correct. I understand what you're saying. Yes, yes. Um, I think the plans need to be 
updated as far as location of existing utilities. Um, I believe there are sanitary sewer facilities, existing facilities on uh, Ellis Road along the frontage of lots one and two, but I didn't see any indication of that on the plan. Uh, same way with water lines. We got that. We were waiting on that information. Well, we finally got it. I, I guess my point is you can't present a plan and say it's final with all these items that still have to be designed and engineered. It, in, in my opinion, we're looking at a sketch plan that probably is going to change because of setbacks and, and on-site sewage systems and things like that. Um, the grading plan, and I think on the design of the stormwater management system, one of the driveways had a six-inch high concrete curb that was used to control runoff to a, an inlet. And that was, I believe, on lot two. Or am I wrong? Yeah, it, it's lot one. Lot one. All right. You had a six-inch berm along the driveway to direct flow to propose yard drain. Mm -hmm. OK. And, and looking at perspective of the property owner, I mean, how effective do you think a six-inch high berm is going to be as compared to, say, a, a concrete curb? If I have to maintain that, that system and, you know, I don't, the common person doesn't understand these things, chances are that berm's going to disappear and you're going to lose the effectiveness of your, of your system. Mm -hmm. and, and I guess if it makes sense to do it on lot one, why wouldn't you do it on lot two to try to collect that water in the same fashion as opposed to collecting it uh, the way it's being proposed. Just a couple of thoughts that I had. Well, we can look at that. Sure, sure. Okay. So, I, I, you know, again, given the condition of the plans and the changes you're talking about making, I don't, I don't see us doing anything tonight in regards to recommend approval or, or anything. I think you have to come back with a plan that, that shows everything that you want to build and how it's going to be built and make sure that that all your I's are dotted and T's are crossed if you want it to be called a final plan. We need that list of waivers and your, your explanation is why you think the waivers are, are acceptable or required. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know, I mean, Kelly, where we stand with time on this thing? Um, we have until the September Board of Commissioners meeting for okay. a final decision. All right, so. At the end of next month, that's when we. We meet again in a month. Sure. Sure. And I think plans have to be submitted within two weeks of the meeting right. so that, you know, our township engineer has a chance to review them. So we may need a time extension depending upon how quickly you can present all this information on the plans. Okay. Um, and and um, I, I would be curious to, to hear from other members of the, of the planning commission as it relates to the couple of issues that I, that I wanted to get your your feelings on both both the sewer issue and the and the sidewalk issue. I'd be curious to understand. Well, in my opinion, you're asking for other opinions. The submission seems to be incomplete, so I think it would be advisable to just take our recommendation and come back. Okay. Yeah. As far as the sidewalk concern, the county has a point in that there's only one property, which would be to the south of you that doesn't have sidewalk, but from that point down to the YMCA, there's public sidewalk. Mm -hmm. So they raise a valid point. I understand what you're saying about a sidewalk to nowhere. And we've been consistent as a board as requiring sidewalks. The board of commissioners might have a different opinion, mm -hmm. and, and it's up to them to sure. grant the waiver. Sure. Yeah. But I, I think collectively we believe that, you know, if it makes sense to put it in, whether or not there's a missing link, you know, at some point in time, that might happen. When that property sells, maybe the township will, will make the owner put in the side. Mm -hmm. We don't know. Yeah, we can't guarantee the future, but we can at least review this based on what the ordinance says. Okay. The ordinance says put them in. But you have the, you know, you have the opportunity to request a waiver and make your best case for why you think a waiver is warranted. Okay. All right. I don't think you will have the support of the planning commission most probably if you don't put the sidewalk in first is it necessary and with the amount of rain that we've had this year with all of the problems that we've had when 
and up and down and around the Yellows Road where it goes down down below and then water is coming up there four times it turned out. I'm just saying I think you're not gonna get support on the sidewalks. I think it would I think it would help you an awful lot in controlling the water coming. I concur with Angelo on the sewer, too. Okay. All right. Very good. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, our, our next applicant is Mr. Storage, 850 North Eagle Road, preliminary final land development plan and lot line change. <coughs> Good evening, Dennis O'Neill. Good evening. Um, I'm with Herbert McCombie's office and we're the engineer for uh, Haverford Mr. Storage. Uh, briefly, as uh, the chairman indicated, there's a uh, minor subdivision uh, from Parcel 1315 Lawrence Road to the existing Haverford Mr. Storage to accommodate an addition to the existing building. Uh, we were here a month ago. Um, we took uh, your input and uh, we went back and revised the plans, resubmitted them. Uh, we are not, um, we have zoning approval from the zoning hearing board and we are seeking um, several waivers. Um, we are asking for um, the curb and sidewalk waivers. Uh, in this situation, there's, we have about 50 foot of street frontage along the access road. And there are two driveways, approximately uh, 20 foot wide each that cross that 50 foot segment. Uh, so a curb would be depressed there would be a very small section of, of elevated curb in between. Uh, there would be just two very minor segments of sidewalk and then you'd be crossing the driveway aprons. Doesn't seem practical to be able to fit sidewalk in that small area. Um, we are asking for um, relief on the street lighting in non-residential developments. We are providing a light at our entrance which will also help aid for um, lighting up the street, the access road at where we're, we're entering our property. Uh, we're asking for a couple partial waivers in that um, there's a requirement that names and property owners within 200 feet of the site and all utilities within 400 feet of the site uh, be shown on a plan. In this case, this addition, all of the utilities servicing this addition are coming from the existing building. And with the exception of this on-site stormwater management, there is no connection to any existing facilities or utilities um, around the site. You may recall that we discussed a couple of issues uh, regarding um, the frontage of 1315 along Lawrence Road our office is in the process of preparing uh, plans for future land development. So we're asking that those requirements for street trees, um, basically shade tree issues be um, put off until that land development comes in. I can tell you that we attended the shade tree commission on Monday night. That issue came up from the shade tree commission about the shade trees along uh, Lawrence Road. Uh, Mr. Celia advised them that we were working on another plan and the Shade Tree Commission understood that and that we do have to address it at the time we do 1315. Um, we are not providing any trees on our property because of the cap, 
but we did show them our a pretty extensive shrubbery and buffering uh, plan that we're, we're proposing along the Lawrence uh, roadside with arborvitae and some other plantings that uh, will not reach the cap level. Um, and then I can go through the rest of the comments. I know there's a couple that we had some sticking points on. Uh, one had to do with the one inch orifice in the um, structure. And we had a, quite a discussion last time about the bull run valve. And we're proposing to take that bull run valve out and reconfigure the um, outlet control in the manhole. I sent Chuck a couple pictures today. I have a uh, sample of what we're proposing. The issue with the orifice is that the one inch orifice tends to get clogged very easily. So what we're proposing is to use a three inch pipe with a, with a grate on it so that the water gets filtered before it gets, we'll still have our, our orifice, our outlet control to control our stormwater, but we'll protect the, and it, this will allow us to keep a sump in that manhole so that anything that does get on here can fall off, have somewhere to go. We're going to extend the pipe to the top so that you have an access port uh, to be able to observe whether whether water's flowing through it. So we're hoping that this configuration of piping will address um, Chuck's concerns as far as the one inch orifice. The other issue that I wanted, wanted to discuss is the fire truck turning across the Gans property. When we revised our plan, we showed an existing 20 foot wide easement that extends from the end of the access road, which is currently owned by the um, federal government, the Army Corps. There's a 20 foot wide access easement that extends into the Gans property um, and the Mardinley properties and uh, DCM. It splits that property line. Um, that easement was created a number of years ago. It shows up on a, on a 1924 um, Damon and Foster plan that we have, but there's no record of a, of a recordation of an, of an access easement in the courthouse that um, defines whose rights they are. It, it's been commonly practiced that everybody has right to use that easement to access that industrial park. As part of the transfer of property from Mardinley's to, to uh, have for Mr. Storage, they are currently working on a draft of that easement language because part of that easement is going to transfer from uh, control of the Mardinley properties to the have for Mr. Storage property. And as part of that, the half on Gans's property will, will be under that control. So. Um, the attorneys who are working on the land transfer are addressing that issue and will be able to provide the township with an easement that indicates that that is free and clear access for anyone who wants to get into that development, including the fire trucks uh, that, that would, would have to enter into our access road that we're providing for fire access to the back of our building. Um, the other comments are, um, appear to be relatively minor. Uh, I will say that, um, we did see the fire, um, department or fire code officials comment about adding a fire hydrant at our entrance. We're proposing to do that. Um, we're working with aqua to determine the size and condition of the main that gets back into that development. Um, but we are, we are, a, in a position to agree to provide fire hydrant for that location. It may have to come off of Lawrence Road. We're not sure yet, but there'll be a fire hydrant there. And I can answer any of the other questions, but we believe um, we've pretty much addressed the comments to a point where um, we're, we're looking forward to the Planning Commission giving us a recommendation tonight. Where would that hydrant be located? Exactly. Uh, it would probably be located in between the two driveways, depending on how far back that existing main goes. When you say, you just like point to it on the plan. Sure. 
Okay. The circular driveway is our entrance. The straightener driveway is the fire department access. So it would probably be located in between those two points. And that's where the fire marshal or fire official requested it be located? He, he just asked for a hydrant in this area okay. to better serve this place. Okay. So you just want to touch base with him, make sure he's satisfied with where you end up putting it. I will do that. Uh, any comments, Jesse? Yeah, could you point, sorry, I didn't catch you while you were in front of the plan. Could you point to where on the plan you're requesting the waiver about the sidewalk? Um, just wanna... uh, in that same area, you have the, the circular driveway that comes in, then there's a short distance in between that and the 20 foot access, which is up against the property that we own. And then our uh, the route of the property line is about 10 to 15 feet away from this driveway. We are curbing this driveway out onto the street. Um, so there will be some curb there, but we're just asking for a waiver for the sidewalk from our property line to that driveway in between the two driveways and the curbing in between the two driveways. And part of the reason we're looking for the curbing is because this is gonna be able for that truck to make that turn in there if he has to. And along everything along Lawrence is what you're asking to kind of reserve until the the 1315 property comes before. Yes, but there is sidewalk there. There's an existing sidewalk there now. Directly across the school. Directly. Yes. Chuck. I uh, I I think you. Uh, hold on. I'm sorry. I think you. Uh, Asked the questions that were concerning me, and uh, and I really do appreciate you bringing that port in and showing us how you think it's going to work because thank you, it's critical. So you see, you addressed most of the items in your letter. Are you going to take care of this item about the uh, elevations on the walls? Uh, yeah, I, I I think the issue the wall has two bottoms, and I think the draftsman just didn't show the, the second bottom. So okay. yeah, we will address that. I'll be addressed. Uh, did I hear you mention that you were requesting a waiver for a uh, street lighting back there? We are, yes. Can I ask why? Uh, we're we're going to provide a light on site that light illuminates our driveway entrance, okay. which will, in essence, provide some lighting to the street and will show a, uh, uh, a lighting pattern for, that was one of the comments, to show the Isolux drawings. So you'll be able to see that there will be some light benefit from that. Along that back wall, will there be any street lighting? Uh, no, but there'll be a building, there'll be a light on the building. Okay. That's for security purposes yes. as well. Thank you. Okay, last time in, you were in, you, we, you talked about trading the uh, open space requirement for the grant of a 15 foot wide access easement? That's, That's correct. correct. Okay, all right. I just wanna throw something out to the board, okay? We, we have our Eagle Road design standards, okay? And the section along Lawrence Road technically is not within the Eagle Road Carter that we studied, but it certainly is connected to it, especially this development. So my my thoughts is that that maybe we could, uh, when that development occurs, we could request that those design standards be applied to that stretch of Lawrence Road. I think that way we'd have that whole industrial area covered, except for the pizza shop on the corner and, and Swift Farm. Okay. How far down? Just here. Okay. To the yeah. Yeah, just probably that right. Up to uh, McNally. So that's something to consider. Now, here's my point. If we just consider the twenty-eight thousand square feet that you're transferring from property A to property B, okay, mm -hmm. 
and apply the, the township formula for a fee in lieu of open space, it comes to like $23,000. Okay. I don't know that that 15-foot easement is necessarily worth $23,000. And I don't know if I can even ask this, but if, if, if it's something that the township commissioners would be agreeable to, I would like to have that money um, and, and maybe we can give you some credit for easement, but some part of that money be applied to the uh, construction of those Eagle Road design standards on Lawrence Road when the time so comes. So that it would offset it. Great. Great idea. No, absolutely. No? Oh, I'm sorry. I don't own the design. I own the property of Lawrence Road. So I talk about it. Come on up. Mike Mardinley from Direct Paint, Bob and Joe, everybody, 1315. I don't know the design standards because I haven't applied for land development yet. Okay, so, they're the same thing that we built along the frontage of the YMCA. Right, right okay, do I have to duplicate the YMCA? Yes. Those are the standards. Same thing that was built along the frontage of the original Mr. Storage property. The okay. sidewalk, the right. fencing, and the, and the, and the piers. And a couple okay, couple so you lights. let the curve from Lawrence Road go around Tony and Roney's and go towards, well, but you don't have to do that part, you only have to do along your property, okay? Okay, but you want it to be continuous as in design well, like at some point, at some point we'd like that to happen okay. since, since that's all an industrial area. Mm. Your industrial. property is contingent to the rest of the Eagle okay. Road here, all so right. you want the late industrial, oh, okay? Get back in. Okay. Have for Mr. Storage is willing to to work with the township to come up with that fee. Okay. And then that fee would be applied to the improvements that, that thirteen. Is worth twenty one thousand? I'm sorry. If I could just interrupt everybody for just a second, so I can kind of but uh, maybe steer this in a different direction. Uh, the open space uh, fee in lieu of goes towards our parks. I, I understand. Uh, I, I don't know that that necessarily applies um, towards a streetscape improvement, which would be more of a streets and sidewalks, public works. Okay. Okay. If, it, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. I, I mean, I just thought. Just wanted to kind of. You know, te technically we don't, that's not part of our corridor, so. But it certainly would dress that area up even more so than it will be. Just thinking out the box a little bit. That's uh, where do you stand with EPA, Dan? We have an email from EPA. I, I gave it to Chuck. We have an email from EPA. Chuck can read it. <laughs> yeah, I think we could just summarize it's two it. Paragraphs. Yeah, it's it's paragraphs. They're looking for some additional information from us, in general, they're in, in, in approval of what we're doing. So you're headed in the right direction. We're headed in the right direction with EPA. You'll and satisfy I, that. I, yes, and I think there's some question that Chuck had about DEP as well, so we just need to work that out. But EPA is kind of driving the boat here with this. Uh, Chuck, anything you would like to add? Um, I don't think so. Um, actually, no, but I did have one more thing. Um, under the zoning comments of the review letter, um, item one requests um, that the land, uh, I'm sorry, that, uh, that there be a partial waiver, I believe, from the landscape, well, the landscape buffer isn't included on the plans at all, actually, um, which the zoning hearing board did make a condition of approval that the landscape buffer um, be installed. So um, is that going to be addressed? There, there is a landscape buffer proposed on the Lawrence Road side of the building okay. in the form of a, a staggered row of arborvitae. And that is part of our development plan. Okay. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to make a comment or ask a question? Okay. Anybody else on the board? Okay. 
How, how close are you to coming back to us for 1315? He'd like me to be here next week, but, or next two weeks, but I'm, I'm a little further away than that. So maybe not August, but maybe September? Uh, probably October. Okay. I'm, we're we're going to need some zoning relief because there's steep slopes along Lawrence Road that we're going to need zoning. So we're going to be we're going to be tied up there probably for a month or so. Remember, we only have one meeting next month anyway. Yeah. Maybe the second the end of the month because of the summertime. I think everyone's anxious to get get this started and then move move on to the next project. Okay, I'll, I'll make a motion that the uh, we recommend final approval for the Haverford Mr. Storage uh, subdivision and land development plans to the Board of Commissioners. Plans prepared by Herman McCombie, Jr., PE, dated May 20th, 2019. Last revised July 5th, 2019. Uh, subject to the following conditions. Uh, one, that all the remaining comments contained in the Pannoni Review Letter dated July 24th, 2019, be addressed to the satisfaction of the township. And uh, number two, that uh, V in lieu of open space uh, be provided for the 27,850 square feet of ground that's being transferred uh, between parcels A and B, and that to the extent that B could be used, be set aside for street improvements along the Lawrence Road frontage of parcel A. And uh, track one, I'm sorry. And that uh, final approval be received from the EPA before any, and the fire marshal before any uh, construction begin on the property. Second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. I'm so sorry, I missed. Who seconded that? I second. <laughs> Mr. Capuzzi? Yes. Mr. Reardon? Yes. Mr. Galman? Yes. Mr. Fiordabundo? Yes. Mr. Poynton? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We have lift off Houston. We do not. Okay. Uh, no minutes, so I'll accept the motion to adjourn. Uh, we got one other thing on the agenda. We do? Oh. We do? It's not on this oh. list. Oh, I'm so sorry. Surprised. What is that? Um, like in the past, the township is applying for another grant, and we need a recommendation from the Planning Commission. So I will hand this out to you, but it's a grant to do some pedestrian improvements at the intersection of Haverford Road and Ardmore Avenue. Okay. Right, the, the state is doing the, the bridge on Ardmore Avenue, but their work is not extending into the intersection. So the idea was to make that intersection a little more pedestrian friendly and installing, um, enlarge the island there it's around the tree, make a little traffic calming there, put in new ADA ramps, crosswalks, new signals, um, something similar to an adaptive controller in, in that area to synchronize the signal and um, upgrade sidewalks in that area too, so. And interestingly enough, when they did the bridge at Haverford and College, they were able to add the adaptive signals that then tied in with Buck and all the way up to the 
to the uh, hospital in Bryn Mawr. Uh, they're working now on doing the same kind of adaptive things in Landover and County Line in Haverford. And by coming down here, that coordination is just unbelievable. They were able, when they were changing everything out uh, as they closed Ardmore Avenue, a man sat down there for five to seven hours. I pulled over and took a look at the machinery, and he's adjusting everything, and all of a sudden there are left-hand turn signals that didn't exist an hour before, and it's just remarkable what they're doing. So this is a wonderful idea. Yeah, this is good. It's not, it's not exactly that adaptive system. It's a little different because there's some idiosyncrasies in that whole corridor. But... Okay. Hmm. Do you need any right-of-way to do this? And weren't those signals updated yeah. several years ago when Ardmore Avenue and Darby Road was updated? When their traffic changes made at this intersection, they put the left turn lane in. That was a long time ago, I believe. Yeah. That was before the um, U.S. Open. First one. The, way yeah. back. Yeah, that's way back, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in 80-something. And look, the signals are kind of antiquated. We're going to put in new controllers. We're, you know, we're, we're going to put in uh, ped crossings and everything. So it just makes sense to do everything at once. Is the island going to be somewhat of a, uh, like a destination bench or something would be there? Or would just well, we were told first of all we can't touch that tree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it decorates. It looks the, like yeah. the island is going to be enlarged. A the island's enlarged. They sort of provide like a, a pedestrian refuge island, like yeah. up here across you know, on Brookline and, and, and further up by the school and everything. So you're not crossing the whole wide intersection in same, you know, in one shot. Good place for a rain garden. Yeah, could be. Yeah. How much are they seeking for the? Um, 725,000, I believe. And the nice thing about this, this match is there's, or this grant is there's no match okay. for the township. There is cost, but there's no match. And that covers pretty much the cost of the work. Yeah, I mean, and the intent is to do this while the bridge is being done. No, this no. is no, this, this is, is in the future. These grants this. are due at the end of, of this month, and they probably won't even be acted on until next year. Okay. So we're a couple of years out. Okay. All right. So you need what a recommendation from Planning Commission that they should yeah. township should proceed with this application yeah, yeah. grant. Yeah, and there's a letter that needs to be signed, a typical letter that we. Okay. Have, so. All right. I'll make a motion that the. Uh, Planning Commission recommend to the Board of Commissioners that they proceed with the application grant for traffic improvement project at the intersection of Hafford Road and Ardmore Avenue. And I'll second it. Okay. Mr. Capuzzi? Yes. Mr. Reardon? Yes. Mr. Galman? Yes. Mr. Friedemondo? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank, thank you, thank Chuck. You. And now I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. All right, so Chuck made the motion and Chris seconded. All in favor? Aye. Say aye. 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 Thank you. 27.